So if you are going through child proceedings right now and you have your first hearing coming up, it might feel overwhelming and you may not be knowing what to do, especially if you're a litigant in person. So I'm just going to give you the lowdown of what to expect for the first hearing. Shout out to the person that uh, requested this quite a bit. So effectively, the purpose of the first hearing is pretty much cards on the table. From the court's point of view, the court is going to be asking itself, what are the issues that we have to deal with? How are we going to direct this forward? You are probably going to have a CAFCAS safeguarding report. And by the way, that report is normally a short report. The clues in the title, CAFCAS, ergo the eyes of the court, are going to want to know what safeguarding concerns, if any, the court has to deal with. The court will have ordered a CAFCAS safeguarding report and you should get that before your first hearing. The CAFCAS safeguarding report is a short phone call. I'd say well, it depends. I mean, it does vary somewhat, but you're looking at a, a shortish phone call of around 15 to 20 minutes. CAFCAS speaks to you. They speak to the other side. They will have already done a background check before they've spoken to you. So they'd have already done a kind of DBS check, uh, whether you're known to local authority, uh, is there anything pending on a police report, uh, then they'll speak to you and effectively that safeguarding report is pretty much cut into three parts. You've got the background, he said, she said, and what CAFCAS reckons the advice to the court moving forward. Now, as a litigant in person, I would always recommend that coming up to the first hearing that you prepare a position statement. No, it's not ordered. But as a litigant in person, when you think the courts are overrun, a short, concise, succinct position statement will tell the court who's who, what's what and what do you want. And that is really helpful in a sea of people that are being put in front of the court. A well put together position statement is diamond and it also is multifunctional because it does a lot of this for you on the day. Now the court does even now puts a great deal of emphasis on pre-court negotiations and I have a word of caution here because if you are a litigant in person that doesn't have anyone by your side you are literally rocking up to court with simply nobody by your side that can feel very overwhelming intimidating there's a whole court etiquette that I've talked about in previous videos and even the language, the language. I spend most of my time just translating what courts are saying, what they mean by this, that and the other, because court language can feel very antiquated. The etiquette is very antiquated. You have to stand up, sit down, know who, how to address a bench of, of magistrates or no. Is it sir, madam or your honour? Do you bow? Do you curtsy? What do you do? So there's a whole smorgasbord of etiquette that does go along with going to court. And if you're not familiar with it, and let's be honest, 70% of people, well, most people who go through family court haven't had as much as a parking ticket. So it does feel very intimidating, especially then if you're confronted by an ex who has a solicitor or barrister and it doesn't matter how lovely they are. I speak for myself here because it doesn't matter how lovely I am, okay? Guarantee you are going to see the other side as Cruella de Vil. Some kind of caricature, some kind of cartoon figure. And it doesn't matter how nice they are or how much they want to, if they do want to resolve matters, you're going to feel like that cat that's backed into a corner. So pro tip here, always have somebody with you, whether it's a Mackenzie friend, whether it's a barrister solicitor, whoever it is, my golden tip here for a first hearing is have somebody with you because that first hearing really sets the tone on how the rest of the case is going to progress. And I suspect also to a greater or a lesser degree, how long it's going to take as well. So that first hearing is actually pretty important. So have your position statement handy. It tells the other side what your position is because that might not have been clear that might not have been clear for a whole host of reasons not least because you guys have separated and communication has absolutely flunked so it's really useful for the other side to kind of know your position more importantly the court knows your position what do you want and getting back to what do you want that will take a whole bunch of listening and negotiation and talking around people not just friends and family because whilst friends and family are amazing they're not walking a mile in your shoes they're not they've not they may not have been through this and not just that but you're their first primary concern and they may have a beef with the ex they may not be completely impartial so have somebody that's next to you that is your voice of sanity who is your voice of perspective 
when you get to that first court hearing the court do like to put um, a whole bunch of uh, emphasis on pre-court negotiation you may or may not have a Kafkas officer present that might help. You may or may not have that there. If not, um, again, I, know, I keep saying this, but the court really likes to have pre-court negotiations because if nothing is agreed at that first hearing, then it doesn't get you ordered usually. Because some people rock up to court and think, well, I'm just gonna have to put my position forward and the court's gonna make an order, right? It doesn't work like that. I hate to be the, the burden of bad news, bearer of bad news, but it doesn't work like that. So much, again, I, have, I am like the definition of a broken record by now, but there is a lot of emphasis that puts on pre-court negotiations because I'm always saying, I'm, I'm of the belief that you are constantly inching your way forward. Sadly, in my line of work, there is never the punch the air moment. There really isn't. I mean, Hollywood has a lot to answer for. Just putting that out there, okay? Nothing happens as fast. In, as, it, as it does in Hollywood. I mean, if I was to do a docudrama of what actually happens in a family court, I'll probably be sat around in a crappy 70s building drinking really crap coffee, coffee if, they have, if they have a vending machine there at all. Side rant. <laughs> so make sure that you are prepped for your first hearing, okay? Having a game plan for the first hearing is super important. The magic is in the prep. Sing it with me. The magic is in the prep. So guys, let me know down below, have you got an upcoming first hearing? What prep have you done? Um, what help have you had? And let me know how it's going. Guys, I hope this is useful. Have an amazing rest of your day and I'll check you later.